Hey guys, what's up? This is going to be a video called Never Miss a Sunday. And this is something which I've been posting about now for years, like five, six years. I think the Bitby Instagram, which came around like, I guess, four years ago, five years ago. That's the first post I made, I think, Never Miss a Sunday, because since I started playing tournaments, I realized that Sunday is such a crucial day. Sunday's going to make me or break me. When I look back at my career, all of my biggest scores are coming from either a series or a Sunday. And when I say never miss a Sunday, this also translates over to a series too. But yeah, never miss a Sunday. A Sunday is where, you know, the majority of my profits come from. Sure, you know, I may have a win on the Bounty Builder 530 on a Wednesday, or I may have won the big 109 for 4K on a Friday once, or, you know, came third in the Fast Friday for $900 or something. But typically, most of my profits are coming from Sundays. If you are a lower stakes player, maybe your biggest profits have come from, say, the big 11. You know, maybe if you're a mid stakes player, your biggest profits have come from, let's say, um, the Sunday Million, where you had a deep run once. You know, like this is the chance we have where the field sizes are so big that huge ROIs are possible. On a normal day like a Monday, the ROIs are not going to be that big because the field sizes are going to typically be so small. And a lot of amateurs are going to be taking a day off because they played yesterday. Uh, this is kind of a Monday, you know, you wake up on a Monday, you decide to play a session, you register from around about 6 p.m., you stop at like 10 p.m. because there's not that much stuff later on. In typical, you play maybe like 25 games. Like, let's say you're someone who plays like eight tables. You know, you play eight tables, you bust some, you re-enter, you're going to get to around about 25 games. Let's say your ABI is around about $50 and your ROI on a typical Monday might be around about 10%. So if we just have a look at what a Monday schedule might look like if you play this kind of ABI. So this is Monday today. So these are all tournaments which started after 3 p.m. where I could potentially register if I wanted to play a session. So the Big 44 started at 3 p.m. So I probably won't make that tournament. This is every tournament between $40 and $500. So the Bounty Builder 215 starts at 3.30. So even if I want to play this like relatively high EV tournament, uh, it's going to be very low EV because it's a PSKO and it means essentially that if I want to register this tournament, one, I have to start at 3.30 because I want to play PKOs, you know, from the start. There's nothing else around 3.30 for me to play. You know, there's not much at all going on there. So I have to play like four tables, five tables, maybe like not much going on. Um, or I register late where my EV drops a lot anyway. So moving on, we're going to have the Bounty Builder 44. Sure, that's a good tournament. We have the Big 109, pretty bad tournament. Uh, an Omaha tournament, you know, like most people don't play Omaha, a hot turbo tournament, going to be very low EV, mini bounty builder, high roller, this is going to be amazing tournament, so this is going to be something which we're going to have really good EV in, a hyper, we're not going to be interested in that, a 100 runner PSKO, sure, we're going to make, you know, a 10% ROI, no problem, bounty builder 109, amazing tournament, sure, that's good, Monday 6 max, really reggy, lots of re-entries, we're not going to be loving this, hot 55, you know, it's a turbo, our, uh, our eyes and turbos are going to be really, really small. Uh, Bounty Builder 215, 200 runners, you know, if your ABI is $50, probably not the tournament you want to take a shot at. It's a tournament which is typically going to be, you know, pretty tough for your ABI to increase to 200. Another Omaha tournament we're not interested in. Big 55, you know, this tournament used to get 600 runners. Now it gets 200, you know, again, you know, you may get, you know, 15, 20% RI in here, sure, but it's not going to be great. Hot 109, we're not going to be interested in. 100 runner, $44, sure, you know, we'll make our 10%. But yeah, typically this daily cooldown, like sure, this is a turbo, probably going to make 10, 15%, even though it's a good one. So this is a Monday, very likely we make money, you know, as a $50 ABI player, we make some money. There's going to be tournaments on party, like the Gladiator, some tournaments on GG, but, you know, the structures on GG are pretty poor and the re-entries are very high. So even though the field sizes are good, it's very hard to, you know, grind it out and take uh, advantage of these weaker players because you have to gamble with the weaker players because the structures are so poor. So, you know, we may make around about 25 games, around about 50 ABI and around about 10% ROI. So, you know, you are going to add in something like, let's say the big 11 and you're going to have maybe, you know, like, 50% ROI in that or something like this, but because it's going to be so low in terms of your ABI, your average ROI is going to probably equal out to around about 10%. 10 so you're going to have around about $225 EV. Now, also other sites like ACR, 
you know, micro game and Unibet, whatever it may be, they typically aren't going to run too much big stuff on a, on a Monday. You may get one or two games on each of the sites. There's not going to be many games which are going to be giving you decent EV. Now let's look at a Sunday. So a Sunday will be an interesting day because one, we're incentivized to start earlier because there's more tournaments earlier so we can register a longer session. Like I would like to play or people would like to play 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. on a Monday too, but there's just not enough tournaments going on there. Whereas on a Sunday, there's loads of tournaments at 3 p.m. that you can start to play. And if not, you even have really good satellites as well, which are going to give you good EV. But typically, you're going to play a longer session. So you're going to play seven uh, eight hours instead of four hours. Uh, I've put a very speculative here, 60 games. You very likely can play more games. Like 80 games isn't ridiculous. Your ABI is going to increase because the, the bigger games start to become more attractive. So the Bounty Builder 215 on a Sunday, on a Monday, not very attractive. The Bounty Builder 215 on a Sunday, very attractive. You're more likely to take shots in these kind of tournaments. Sunday Million becomes unmissable. GG Masters becomes unmissable. The one shot on party becomes unmissable. You see some tournaments like the GG Masters 1K, you maybe start having to play this tournament as a $200 yourself and sell 80% of your action. There's so many options to uh, play really high stakes. You could even play, let's say, the W Cup 10K main event if someone puts you in and you play for like, you know, 5% of yourself, whatever it may be, let's say it's a 10k buy-in, you suddenly have a $500 tournament on your screen where you're used to playing $50 ABI. So there's so many ways where this ABI can increase a lot more on a Sunday than it's going to be on a Monday. Your ROI automatically increases because you're playing all of these softer tournaments. Uh, so you're going to have around about 25% ROI or around about 2.5 times higher ROI than what you have on a Monday. So if you're like a 30% ROI player on a Monday, you're a really good player, right? But on a Sunday, this means your ROI is also going to increase because you're a really good player. So uh, relatively. So our EV, we can see here, is going to change from $200 on a Monday to $1,800 on a Sunday. And this again is, you know, this this could also increase. Once you just increase this to, to 80 increase this to 250, increase this to 50, you know, whatever it may be, 40, 30, whatever it may be, this EV starts to get really high. So the EV of grinding on a Sunday is really, really high, whereas EV of grinding on a Monday is going to be pretty low. So let's just have a look at Sunday session yesterday, which was the 24th. If we run through some games, we can see some stuff straight away. Bounty Builder 215 is 200k guaranteed rather than 35k. Sunday warm-up was 300k prize pool. This is not on a Monday. It's like this tournament is unmissable if you're a $50 ABI player. You know, you're going to be making here probably 50% ROI. So that's going to be $70, you know, which is going to be a third of your Monday EV just from this one tournament. Uh, Bounty Builder 44 is now 200k guaranteed. Your ROI just in these tournaments are going to increase too. A bigger one on nine, you know, not a great tournament. This Bounty Builder 530, you're probably not going to play this every day. But on a Sunday, you're very likely going to take a shot because it's going to be over 1 million for first place prize, which is going to be crazy, right? So this is going to be a tournament which you just can't miss. If you're a $50 ABI player, you just sell 50% and now you're going to play as a $250 buy-in. So now you, you know, you're starting to have lots of opportunities to make money. Bounty Builder 55, you know, this is going to go up a lot. Sunday million, like probably one of your highest EV tournaments right in your buy-in range. Bounty Builder 109 is 2.5 times higher prize pool, so your ROI is going to go up a lot too. There's another Bounty Builder 215 with 200k. You know, I, I could go on again and again and again and again. Even the big, bigger 55, which is not that big, it's still three times as big as the Monday big 55, you know? So if you start thinking about ACR, you now start having some really good games. You think about Party, there's some amazing games. There's some really good satellites. GG has so many good games. You could easily be playing, you know, like 10 plus tables and have really, really, really high EV tournaments through the whole of your Sunday. Uh, so yeah. This is just me trying to show you the illustration that Sundays are probably going to be 10 times as high EV as Mondays are going to be. Like, I think this number here very likely goes up to like 2200. And then Sundays start to become 10 times higher EV than a Monday. So, yeah, this is showing basically how great playing these kind of Sundays are. Um, so, yeah. Because Sundays are so important, Sunday essentially starts on Monday. That's how I see things. Mondays now. I played yesterday and now I need to plan for next Sunday because if I know that all my EV is coming on the Sunday and if I know I'm investing so much money and I'm taking shots and this is what my whole week's going to be about that I'm studying to that I'm getting towards then everything starts on a Monday.
And typically on a Sunday, you leave everything on the battlefield. You're going to grind from, you know, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. You're going to, or like, by the way, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. is registering time. Obviously, you're going to have deep runs. So you may play from like 3 p.m. to like 4 a.m. So you may play like a 13 hour session. So because of that, on a Monday, you're very likely not going to have energy. So one of the first things we need to start doing is getting our energy back because it's normal. Like now's Monday. Very likely you don't want to study. You don't want to play. You don't even want to think about poker. That's fine. You know, if, if you're that kind of person who doesn't want to think about poker on a Monday, that's fine. Realize that, accept it, and move into Monday with the understanding here that we need to get our energy back for later on in the week. We need to be at peak energy by Sunday. So if this means on Monday and Tuesday we want to just not think about poker at all and we want to just leave poker to the side and we want to just, you know, go for spas and go for walks and get our exercise back and sleep well. Maybe you haven't slept well because Sunday, you know, get get your good sleep in, get your energy back, get yourself more enthusiastic about playing and studying. So energy is a huge thing. Uh, this can also come from diet. So maybe you've been eating bad over the last weekend. Now you've played Sunday. You haven't really been able to eat well. Uh, you've been eating like fast, etc., because you're grinding when you're eating. It allows you for Monday to sort this out. You can eat a good meal. You can be well fed, which sounds kind of silly, but your body kind of needs it as well. I'm not going to try to start saying I'm some nutritionist, but food is obviously super crucial. So getting yourself in a mode on Monday where you don't start chasing this small EV of the Monday grind and you start chasing your energy, you start chasing your diet, you start chasing your nutrition to get back ready because Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are going to be important days and Sunday is going to be a really crucial day. So starting to get your energy in order straight away is going to be really, really crucial, I think. Uh, the next thing is also like similar kind of thing, enthusiasm, enthusiasm and positivity. On a Sunday, usually you're going to run bad. A lot of your ROI is going to come from these huge wins, these huge scores, the huge run good. But a lot of the time you're going to run bad, you know, so you have to accept that. You're going to have to accept that you're not going to enjoy every Sunday. So after a Sunday session, you're going to grind it 14 hours for nothing a lot of the time. And it's easy to be negative. You see your friend who's just playing, ruffling around on his iPad. He wins, you know, the Sunday million or whatever. And it's very easy to have like injustice. Like, why does that guy deserve to, to have this win when I put everything in all week planning for Sunday and he's had the win? This is a very normal feeling to have. So even, like, even about like your closest friends. So when this is the case, it's important to start to get back positivity, start to have a gratitude process, have a process where you start to see gratitude. So maybe on a Monday you wake up on Sunday, you've been really negative, like your session's finished, you've broken some stuff, you've been bitching about your friends to other friends. But then you wake up on a Monday, it's snowing outside in London right now, and you see your girlfriend has to take the bus to work. She has to travel an hour to work in the cold. She has to get up at 8 a.m. She has to go to a job that she doesn't love, that she doesn't enjoy. Maybe you see, you know, your mum is still working and she's still putting in the hours to, you know, pay for the mortgage and um doing all the stuff which she needs to do which most people need to do this can kind of put us into this you know gratitude process that you know sure we're running bad on a sunday we've had some bad fortune but we're running good in life to be able to be in this position so starting to bring back your positivity start to bring back your enthusiasm starting to bring back your gratitude and understanding wow we're in a lucky position to be here we could have ran bad when we played that eleven dollar tournament four years ago. We could have been we could have ran bad when we went to the casino that first time, and we could have, we could have just forgot about poker. There's so many ways where we're lucky to be where we are. If we ever feel like we're being unlucky because we've had a bad session on a Sunday, it just shows us that we don't really realize how lucky we actually are to be in this position. Uh, so the next thing is going to be studying mentality. So one Sunday's gone, the next Sunday comes. So what I like to do on a Sunday is essentially. I like to save everything I do in, in GIs or captures. So if I have a hand which comes up, I like to save all the hands. So this is my Sunday session yesterday. So I saved around about 25 hands on the Sunday. So your studying for the next Sunday actually starts on the first Sunday. So on the first Sunday, you know there's going to be loads of spots which you're not sure about. So, you know, I have ace queen off here. I face a free bet in a 5k against David Yan. I don't know, should I shove? Should I call? Like, what's going on here? How much is Shovin making? Another hand I may look at here is going to be, um, I open ace five suited, I get free bet. I'm, I'm wondering, should I call the free bet? How good is calling the free bet here? 
The turn comes a king, and now I start asking myself, okay, should I start bluffing? My hand has good equity. I block aces. I block ace king. I can make jacks, tens, so I have equity. It's a PSKO, etc. And then the river size, and I go in, and he calls with pocket jacks. And I have to ask myself, okay, how good is his call? What's the properties for his call, etc. So I save all of these kind of hands, you know, all different kinds of hands from all different kinds of spots. So this is going to allow me to basically be in a situation where. I have a lot of study and material for the next Sunday. I have 25 things I want to look at. Never mind like topics which I'm studying, videos I'm watching, courses I'm watching. I have 25 topics which I'm kind of unsure about that I want to improve on. So uh, the, stu the study and mentality starts the Sunday before. The study and material comes from the Sunday before. It gives us that material. But uh, our mentality needs to start getting into gear because if we wait till Saturday, it's not enough time. We have to start the studying, you know, could be Monday. It depends It depends on your personality. It could be Tuesday. It could be Wednesday. But if we start by Wednesday, know that, okay, I'm going to take a couple of days to refresh, a couple of days to regroup. Then Wednesday to Saturday, I'm going to work really hard studying. And then Sunday, I'm going to go in and play a big session again. That's going to be really good. But you need to have this consistent mentality because if you're the kind of person who just walks in your office and hopes everything's going to be okay, it's never going to work out good. You have to have this regimented processes which work really well for you. But my processes won't work for you. Your processes won't work for me. It's all about doing what's exactly right for you. You know, maybe you like to study in the morning. Maybe you like to study in the evening. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm often studying till 8 a.m., 7 a.m., 6 a.m. And people are like, oh my God, you're working so hard here. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not working at 3 p.m. I'm not working at 2 p.m. when you're working. So, you know, it's it all depends on each person, I think. Um, the next thing I think is really crucial. So what I used to do a lot on Sundays is I'd wake up on a Sunday, I'd open the lobby, I'd be like, okay, Poker Stars today, there is a 215 Fat Sunday Turbo. It's not really in my bankroll to play. I need to start taking some shots on Sunday because this is where all my EVs come in from. So I need to start selling action to these tournaments. Let's say Bounty Builder 530. Let's say your bankroll is enough that you can play $50 ABI. Playing the Bounty Builder 530 is such a crucial game for you to play. One, massively high ROI. Two, it starts to give you experience in some bigger games, which is so, so crucial. Like if you just move up slowly from 50, 50, 60, 70, 80 ABI, once you get to higher stakes, a lot of people, they start to crumble. The better way to do it is start selling action, like 80% action to people who believe in you. And you play the tournament like a $100 uh, tournament, essentially. And then one, you get the experience. Two, you're making ROI on the on the on the tournament itself, and three, you can actually sell these tournaments for markup. So if you start selling, you know, 60, 70 percent of your schedule every Sunday at a markup, uh, you start to actually have like you start to have this like lower variance route on a Sunday too. And then you may say, well, I don't know somebody who can buy my action. Well, that's all about getting people to be impressed by you. It's about being busy. It's about being in communities. It's about posting hands. It's about you know. Maybe make a YouTube video, maybe start to Twitch, whatever it may be, you know, like start being active if you don't have a community already to sell action to, or maybe get staked, you know, if right now you're playing $50 ABI and you are making, you know, X, X ROI, then, you know, if you start selling action for $50 ABI, that's not going to be good. But if you can start getting staked for like $300 ABI or $250 ABI, the, from one of the big stables, you're also going to give you some coach and whatever it may be. This starts to very quickly be a very good investment for you. Um, so yeah, schedule and sell and action is really important. So even by Wednesday or even on GG, it's quite nice. You don't even need a community on GG. On GG, what you can do is here. So let's just pull up a lobby here. Uh, I'm going to show you a good example of this actually. So the 10K for next week is going to already be in the lobby most likely. Let me have a look here. If I filter this by buy-in, yeah, we're going to see that there's already people selling action to next week's tournament on the 10K. So you can see that these guys, Sperra, Runa Botin, Gleb Temzen, they, they're kind of saying, look, this is a really important tournament for me to play for my ROI. It's 200 runners guarantee for a 10K, so that's really good. I usually play, you know, 100 runner fields, 50 runner fields. So this is a really good tournament, but it's really expensive. So I need to play this but I need to sell action. So this guy here, he's got 800k profit, but he still realizes he needs to sell action for the highest tournaments in his in his buy-in range. He sells 55% and he starts selling a week before. So this player, 
He may not be as strong as some other players, but maybe what's really strong about his game and his professional side is that he's, he's selling his action and he's scheduling his week. He's already planning for the next Sunday, which is pretty impressive. And you can do this for any tournament. You can do this for, say, the GG Masters. This is coming up next week. We can see there's already 23 people selling action. You know, why not? Why not go in there yourself? You know, like, why not go in there and do this every Monday? The worst thing that can happen is someone doesn't buy your action. You can see some people here are selling at pretty high markup. This lady here, she's selling at 1.22 markup. So every week she's making the markup on one of her high, higher buying ranges here. We're going to see some of these guys, they're selling at 1.88 markup, you know, and they're starting to sell on a Sunday. I'm not saying you should necessarily start selling so, so at such high markup, but if you sell, you know, 1.05 and you just click on somebody's staking profile, um, if you go into the staking profile, usually it shows you how much profit they have and all this kind of stuff. So if you are winning play on, these, on GG especially, you should be selling action and taking shots in all of these higher buy-ins. And doing this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even in a Skype group, whatever it may be, uh, there are Skype groups where you can see here, for example, um, there's a Skype group here where people are selling action every single day. You can see there's 600 participants in here and... You can see there's people selling action all the time. And he's like some of the, you know, top professionals in the world. But there's players from all kind of stakes. This guy's selling a $315 tournament. This guy's selling a 1K tournament. This guy's selling a $1,700 tournament. And then you're going to see there's people like Ben CB who are selling 25Ks. You know, so everyone is doing this. You know, all professionals from all stake levels are doing this. Don't start feeling like you're weak for selling action. You know, it's professional to do this. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really crucial. Next thing, social life. So. It's really, really, really crucial that we play Sundays. But if you have friends who have a birthday around about the Sunday and they're going to want to do something and they're the one who has to plan it, then very likely they may do something on a Sunday because that's when other people do it. So what I like to do is have a really good calendar of friends' birthdays, family's birthdays, weddings, everything going on. So if I have a friend whose birthday is coming up in two weeks, I'll make sure that I go out with him on the Saturday or the Friday or the next Monday or the next Tuesday. Or if I have a business meeting that I need to do for something which is not poker related, and I know that these people like to do on the weekend, maybe it's football. I do a lot of stuff in football now. Saturday, people can't do it. So usually they want to do things on Sunday. So I make sure that I say, okay, hey, mate, can I take you for a drink on Friday? Are you, are you free Friday? Can we go for a chat on Friday? All this kind of stuff I'm always trying to plan before. And, you know, if you have a girlfriend, it's very important to have the balance. If they, they're they not going to want you to grind Friday, grind Saturday, grind Sunday. So it's really important for them that, you know, maybe Saturday is the day where you put in, you know, a lot of hours with them and are very present in your life with those people. So something I've noticed is that a lot of people's poker career fails because of social life. Either their girlfriend, their wife, their friends, their family, whatever, they interfere too much. And usually this is because of understanding. It's because... You know, Sunday comes around and they roll out of bed to their computer, barely talking to whoever and you start grinding and they're not present on other days and not explaining the situation. And I think this is also something which is really crucial that a lot of my success, I always put down to loved ones and support of either girlfriends or um, family or whoever it may be that they've had like my back on Sunday. So they've made sure like if I've gone home on a Sunday to Newcastle where I live for Christmas. My parents know how big Sunday is for me because I've explained it to them. I've explained the importance and I've pointed out and I've shown them the math and they've seen following me that my biggest results have come on Sunday, stuff like this, that if I go back on a Sunday, my family will even have like new mouse pads ready or they'll make sure I have a mouse or they'll make sure that I have a monitor or they'll drive me somewhere to make sure that I can bring up a new laptop if I forget my laptop. They're going to be very present for me there. When I'm playing, they're bringing me stuff. It sounds so silly, but you know, like they'll bring me the waters, they'll bring me food, you know, they, they will realize how important it is for me. And when you kind of see that people next to you are doing that for you, you get a lot of gratitude out of it and you want to like almost do it for them. It's also, it's not going to give, you know, like 10% extra ROI. But, you know, it's not, you're not going to have to run to the door to get your food or you're not going to have to do X. You're not going to have to do Y. So locking in the support of the loved ones is really good and really important. And I also think locking in the support of the loved ones for Sunday also carries over to Monday because they're going to know that you're not going to always have good Sundays. They're going to know you're going to be losing more money than they're going to make in a year sometimes or make in a month very, very often. So when that's the case um for them to be there to pick you back up on the monday for them to be there on the monday to give you the support for them to be there on the monday to tell you no everything's going to be okay next sunday will be fine if if your loved ones understand how important sunday is to you i think very likely 
that they're going to be part of your Monday process. They're going to be the one bringing you a coffee saying, okay, let's start the week out well. Do you want to go for a run together? Do you want to work out together? Whatever it may be, they're going to get you out of that slump. So locking in the support of the loved ones, I think is so crucial. Send them this video. Like, it's fine, you know? Like, maybe they think I'm an idiot. But send them this video and show, you know, kind of the importance of it. The night before. So the night before kind of rolls over to a few things. The night before is about sleep. Uh, it's really important to have a good sleep the night before because you're going to be up for a long time. But it's also important to sleep a little bit later the night before, I think, because you're going to want to start, you're going to want to be very well, you're going to want to, you're going to be working until very late the next day. So like, let's say you're going to be working until 4am in the UK the next day. That's going to be some of your peakest hours. Like the latest hours you play on a Sunday are going to be your most crucial in terms of EV and dollar one, because if you're playing at 3am, 4am, 5am, 2am, you're going to be playing when you are on a final table or final two tables, making decisions for thousands of dollars, making decisions for houses or cars or whatever it may be. So it's very important that you're well energized and it's also very well important that you're not feeling too tired by those times. So typically what I like to do is go to sleep on Saturday at around about 6am, 7am. So this is going to mean, let's say I sleep from on Saturday from 6am I'm going to sleep five hours till 12, then say another two hours. So I'm going to sleep like six till two or six till three, and I'm going to be very well energized and I'm going to have a good sleep so that when I am playing 2 a.m., 3 a.m. on a Sunday, I'm not feeling too tired because my sleeping pattern's kind of in motion. So the night before sleeping pattern, I think is really crucial. The night before, always restart your computer. Make sure you can do your updates so that there's no updates happening on the middle of a Sunday. Make sure your subscriptions to your table management is there. Make sure your subscription to everything else is there. Um, make sure that internet is okay. Restart your router the night before, whatever it may be. Do all these things so that there can be no troubles going on. Uh, order food the night before for the next day if you want to, so you're not starting to order food in the middle of your session. Have things ready, have things planned. Maybe prepare your food the night before, cook your food the, meal the night before so you can heat it up. Um, go shopping the night before. Like, if, if you go shopping the day before and get waters in and get nuts in or whatever it may be, it's going to just be way better than doing it on the same day as a Sunday. Um, because on a Sunday, you want your whole mind to just be in the moment, getting ready to play rather than having to go to the supermarket in the cold or whatever it may be. But anyway, this is going to be the end of this video. I do think it's so crucial. Like, this is everything, I think. And even if you don't watch another video in the whole course, Hopefully this is going to just make you remember this and show you how this can be. Maybe do the same maths yourself. Kind of estimate how many games you play. Estimate your ABI. It's very easy to do. You can just check on Sharkscope and then estimate a relatively low ROI. And then on Sunday, do the same thing. And when you do the same thing here, you're going to be able to basically see it yourself in clear numbers. How important is Sunday to you? versus how important is a Monday to you, you know? Um, the other side of the coin is that Sundays are more high variance. So Sundays are going to be where we're going to have our biggest downswings and Monday's more the bread and butter. But this game is about making money, not about controlling the variance uh, necessarily. So uh, the difference between EV and the two days is so big and sell an action. If you want to control the variance, start sell an action, get into the client, sell action in the client's Go to the Skype group, sell action in the Skype groups, find a friend, find a mentor, find someone who maybe coaches you and you give him 20% of your action and he buys 30% of your action, whatever it may be. Get into these kind of arrangements to lower your variance rather than just taking off Sunday. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to end this video now, but hopefully this is going to help you guys. And I really, really do hope this helps you. And uh, join me on a Sunday. Never miss a Sunday hashtag. I'll be there every Sunday wishing you good luck and getting in the mixer.